Let's bring in Debbie Hines now for more on the US prison system. She's a trial lawyer, legal analyst, and former Baltimore City prosecutor. Thanks so much for joining us, Debbie. Thank really you. appreciate it. Um, you know, we heard it from Edith there in that report. There's been an Inspector General's report from Homeland Security. Why haven't things improved? Well, I think we have to go back to the whole crux of the problem is of mass incarceration in the United States, that right. even if everything did improve, we don't need to have the millions of people that we have under the confines of the criminal justice system. And that includes the people that are there awaiting a trial. I mean, there are people that have been waiting a trial where they're presumed innocent, have not been found guilty of anything, and they're on lockdown for 23 hours a day. And I know that because I've had clients that have had that situation. And and the other people are people that are um, that are there, as you know, on high enhancement sentences. So the whole system. I know we're focusing on what can we do to eliminate some of the problems for people that are in jail, but we have to look at what can we do to get the majority of the millions of people that are in jail that don't need to be in jail, such as the mentally. Um, people that have right. mental issues and substance abuse issues uh, who are, uh, you know, there have been stories of people who have mental issues that have been in solitary confinement for nine months of their prison term. Obviously, that's not going to help anyone, but it truly is not going to help anyone who's there with mental, with mental illnesses as well as substance abuse issues. So that's really where the focus has to be. And some of that was done. Uh, during the beginning of COVID, where prosecutors in certain areas that are formed um, as progressive prosecutors chose not to prosecute for low-level misdemeanors, which make up the vast majority of people that are in the system. Right. So that are... I remember that, that some people uh, during COVID got released or, or um, were moved to other facilities, et cetera, et cetera, because uh, it really was putting a strain on the system. And, and that sort of highlighted uh, uh, just how bad the system got, which leads into my next question. Why did the system uh, get so bad? Uh, some have mentioned privatization of the prison system. Others have talked about uh, uh, too much focus on African Americans, uh, um, uh, misdemeanors, etc. What, in your opinion, as an experienced prosecutor and advocate here? So, of the three that you've mentioned, privatization of the criminal justice system is the least amount. Um, the, the primary problem is the fact that there are a disproportionate amount of African Americans in the system, people that look like me. In the state of Maryland, right. where I reside, there's for, um, somewhere around 70 percent of people that are in the system, um, incarcerated, either pretrial or because they've been convicted, are black people. In a city, in a state where there's only 28 um, percent nationwide, it's 42 percent of people that are in the prison system Incredible. are black people, and we only make up 30, 13 percent right. or less of the system. So that's really where the the problem is. And with misdemeanors, I don't want to in any way overstate the fact that every year, 13 million people go through the criminal justice system, and they make up the misdemeanors, the 80 percent of people that are charged with misdemeanors. If we found a way. And there is a way uh, to basically decarcerate that 80 percent. We could get the mass incarceration issue under control. Right. That's really interesting. So what about the way forward, apart from what you just suggested? Uh, there's a new <laughs> prisons chief. Uh, the Biden administration say they're committed to uh, long term uh, uh, judicial and justice reform. Uh, what else uh, need, boxes need to be ticked for this to happen? So we already saw some of the things that need to be done, but on a more broader scale during COVID, where there were many prosecutors in, ma in many major cities, including Baltimore, that basically declined to prosecute low-level misdemeanors that we're talking about. And what studies did show, uh, because many of the cities had researchers from different universities, which found out that those people did not go back and create any more crime. It was less than 1 percent in Baltimore. And so, therefore, there was no increase to um, public safety. That's really the main thing that right. we need to do. We need to look at these misdemeanors and basically figure out which ones really should be prosecuted and which ones should not be prosecuted for mental health people. We need to find diversionary programs. People that are suffering from mental health, people that are suffering from substance abuse issues, it's not that they may not have committed crime, but they do not deserve to be incarcerated right, totally. for the crime. Right. So we're talking about programs outside. 
and not incarceration inside. Exactly. Uh, excellent point. De uh, Debbie Hines, thanks so much for joining Thank us. You. Please come back again because you made this complicated problem so clear. I really appreciate Thank it. You.